Bukeneza Zidane is someone who knows almost everything about beans. They are a staple for Burundians, and Zidane has been selling them in this city for the past 12 years. But the bean business has never been quite this bad. <laughs> The week is almost over and see, we still have stock. People are not buying. We've even reduced prices, but the thing is, people don't have money. Not so long ago, Zidane could sell three sacks or more a day. Now he'll be lucky to shift a kilogram, for which he'll receive less than a dollar. Traders across the capital have similar stories. In the past 12 months, the city has witnessed riots, an attempted coup, and a steady stream of killings. Many businesses are closed. Others are struggling to stay open. Well, traders here are telling us that the number of people who fled the country is having a ripple effect on money circulation. And even those who've been left behind have little purchasing power. Most are struggling to buy basic commodities. Even before the troubles, life was tough. Farming is the mainstay of the economy, but it's not enough to sustain Burundi's growing population. The country is one of the poorest in the world and relies on foreign donors for half of its budgetary funding. As the troubles have mounted, that funding has dried up. The European Union just last month suspended aid. The impact is widespread. A feeding program run by the University of Burundi has recently been suspended. There's no money to pay for it. A year into the crisis, the protests may have died down. But the fallout from the troubles is hurting just about everyone. Jane Keo, CCTV, Bujumbura, Burundi.